Again, welcome back to C++ programming language. This is unit two, lecture number three. Our main objective is to learn how to use the augmented assignment operators in C++ and also to look at the difference between post increment and pre increment and also post decrement and pre decrement. We're also going to learn how to convert numbers to a different type using the casting. So we start with the augmented assignment operators. Uh, in C++, same as uh, Java, we can use the augmented assignment operator, for example, plus equal. Now, when we say plus i is plus equal eight, it means we are going to add eight to the variable i and then update the previous value in i. So for example, here we say i plus equal eight is the same as i equal to i plus eight. So for example, if previously the i value is 10, then we are going to add eight to 10 and we are going to store the result 18 to i again. So the goal of using augmented assignment is to update uh, the current value in a, a variable. So for example, minus equal means f equal to f minus 8.0. So which means whatever f value is, we are going to subtract 8 from it. Then the result, we are going to store it in the same variable f. We also have a multiply, multiply equal, divide equal, and also remainder equal. So for example, multiply equal, we have i multiply equal 8. It means whatever value we have in i, for example, i value is 1. We are going to multiply 1 to 8. The answer will be 8, and we are going to store the new answer 8 in a variable i. Same thing applied to division. Let's say our previous value of i is 16. So we divide 16 by 8. The answer is 2, and we are going to store the 2 in the same variable i. Also, we have the increment and then decrement operator, same as Java language. So plus plus VAR means we are going to increment the content of VAR by one before we use it. So that's why it's called pre-increment. So we say the expression plus plus VAR, we increment the VAR by one and then evaluate to the new value in val after the increment. Now, post increment means we are going to do something with val. Then after we finish, we increment the result by one. So post, post increment is the expression val plus plus evaluate to the original value in val. Then after we finish, we increment val by one. So again, pre increment means we increment the content of the variable first before we do our operations. Post increment means we use the variable var to do something. After we finish, we increment it by one. Same thing applies to the decrement. So pre-decrement also means we are going to decrement the var by one, then we do something. Post decrement means we are going to do something with var. After we finish, we decrement the var by one. So we say the expression decrement or minus minus var, we are going to decrement var by one because it's pre decrement, decrement by one, then evaluate to the new value in var after the decrement. Now with the post decrement, the expression var minus minus or decrement, we are going to evaluate the original value in var. And after we finish, we decrement var by one. So example is given here, we have a variable name i, it's int, and we assign 10 to it. Next, we have a variable new norm. We declare it as int also. Then we multiply 10 by i plus plus. And so this means again, post increment. So we can see what we get here first. We are going to get 10 times i. So whatever the value of i is, we are going to multiply first before again 
we increment because again it's post increment now this is pre-increment so this means again we are going to increment i by one first before we multiply so we can see the result here um, this is again post increment so i is what 10 so we say the new norm will be 10 which is here times the value of ifs then after we finish we increment i by one so that's i equal to i plus one means it's the same as i plus plus increment i by one but this is a pre-increment so what we did first we're going to increment i i is 10 so i will be 11 that's pre-increment so now it will be 10 times 11 so with post increment the new norm value will be 10 times 10 which is 100 but with again pre-increment we are going to multiply 10 times 11 because we increment ifs before we multiply with a pre-increment again increment before multiply post increment we do our operation first before we increment i by one so here is using increment and decrement operators makes expression short, but it also makes them complex and difficult to read. So always we should avoid using these operators in expressions that modif modify multiple variables or the same variable for multiple times, such as here we have, have increment i, which is again pre-increment i plus i again. Now we should consider the following sentences. We have a variable name i again. The data type is short, we assign 100. Then we have a variable name k. The data type is long. And we assign the formula i times three plus four, which will be 100 times three plus four. Then we have another variable double, which is d equal to i times 3.1 plus k divided by two. And this gives us the concept of numeric type conventions. And as we said earlier, if you are doing, uh, for example, arithmetic expression, let's say, for example, multiplication or division, if both of your values are integer, a whole number, the result will be a whole number. If one of them are decimal number, then the result will be decimal number. So always decimal number is uh, at the end of the whole numbers. So this gave us a concept of uh, what I just said now is a concept of implicit instead. So if I have a, a variable D, data type is double, we assign three to it. And then I want to convert it. We will call this the type widening. If I'm casting int and double, well, if I pass and double to int, I'm going to lose the decimal places. But if I'm casting int to double, I'm not going to lose anything. So we have what we call the narrow, narrow type, and also widening type. So this is to explicit casting. Explicit casting means we are the one going to convert the data type. So if I'm casting a decimal number, or in this case, let's say a double or float to a whole number, it's, it's a type narrowing concept. But here again, we are doing it explicitly. Uh, this is implicit casting. It depends on the data type you have and uh, do your multiplication. As we said earlier, if I'm dividing a decimal number by an integer, a whole number, the answer will be again a decimal number. But sometimes we can do it explicit also. So as we said, we look here, we are converting a decimal number to a whole number. So we are going to lose the decimal side. So this will give us three. Int 3.9, we are going to ask I will be three. So it's going to, the fraction part is truncated, remove. Now casting does not change the variable being cast. So for example, if we have D, it's not changed after casting in the following code. Remember here we have D equal to 
pass B to int. And that doesn't mean B is now int. You have to, again, change the data type. So here, for example, we are going to store the value in a variable name I, but we declare it as int. So D is not changing, it's still double fraction. And also we said that GNU and also Visual C++ compilers will give a warning when we are doing a narrow type, unless you use a static past to make the conversion explicit. Because now we have to type again, widening and narrow. Narrow means we're going to lose some part of the value if we change the data type. So let's see one example. Here we're going to have a program that will again keep two digits after the decimal points. And the question here is that we should write a program that is spraying the cell stars with two digits after the decimal point. So this is our program. Again, we have our normal include our whole string using namespace std. We have our main function. First thing we're going to do is to enter the purchase amount. So we ask the user to enter the purchase amount. Then the user use the scene in, which is the keyboard to enter the purchase amount. Then we are going to find the task. The task is 6%. So we multiply the purchase amount by 0 0.06 which is 6%. And here we say the cell stars is uh, 6, again, whatever the amount is. But here you can see that we are trying to convert it to an int. We're trying to convert it. We can just say that the cell stars is whatever amount it is, because the cell stars, again, is uh, the task is double. So whatever amount we get, let's say 20.3, anything. But yeah, when we get the answer finished, we want to pass it to int. So we are not using the variable here because the variable type task will be the same double. So if I want to print uh, the result, the task in double, I can just put the variable name here, task, the task variable name to, to print double for us, the result. But yeah, we convert it to int. So let's run this program and see. So first we are in the main function now. Uh, we declare variable name purchase amount. We ask the user to enter the amount. And I'm going to enter 67 uh, or 67.89. Uh, then the data type is double, so it's okay. Now, next, we can already see the output here, 67.8 now. And what will be the task after this statement is executed? Uh, so after the statement is executed, it will be 0 0.06 again times the amount that we enter. Uh, don't have no calculator, so I'm just going to guess it. Uh, see if we can. This is seven. Okay, so wrong. My task will be so. This is the amount, which means again, we all know it will be sixty-seven point eight nine times point zero six, and that will give us four point zero seven, etc. Again, we can see it's double, so it's a decimal number fifteen, uh, fifteen decimal places. Normally, double have a fifteen decimal places and then float have seven decimal places. So that's our answer here, that, that's the result. But now we are doing casting here. So let's see what will happen. You can see what we are doing here now, casting. We have the task amount, and then we can see the formula times 100 divided by 100.0 here. So that will reduce, why 100.0? We want to reduce the decimal places to only two. To. So when we run this, again, we get it 4.07. So let's try it on our platform, our program. Uh, I don't want to copy the numbers, otherwise I have to delete the numbers. So again, I'm going to leave this as it is now. Uh, let's see if we can. 
open it again. Okay, so I open it again without the numbers. Then we can run it. Uh, if it's with the numbers, then I have to delete all the numbers. That will take us some time. So this is the program again, just to run it. Again, we get the concept already. So just to run it and see our output. So here I compile it, there's no error, and I'm going to run it. So first thing, we should enter the purchase amount. I enter for 470, 67, 89. So the set starts, we can see two decimal places, 34.07. Now, if we remove, actually we can do it here. If we remove the casting, we can just put the task variable. Then we are going to get all the decimal places. So we enter the amount again. And here, okay, give me two decimal places because I forget to I forget to save it after I change the content. So I'm going to save. It's already saved. Make sure it's saved. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to compile it first before I run it. Otherwise, it's going to run the previous. So now we should get a right result now. 567. You can see the decimal places will be here. The possible is four decimal places uh, based on the, yeah. it can be up to 15, depends on the result. So that will be the conclusion for this uh, lectures and see you in the next lectures. Thank you.